What is up? Welcome back to another live stream. I see we have a new member, Funny Videos for Life. If you guys want to be a champion member for the live streams, uh, there's a link in the pinned comments down below. It's like five bucks per month. I might actually bring that down. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's so easy way to support. Thank you so much for the super chat for the uh, membership. I appreciate it. Um, today's video, I want to go over a few things. Uh, some of you guys were asking me about this Uniswap. Wells notice with the SEC, uh, how it's going to play out, what things going to happen. Uh, and there's a lot of things we're talking about on Discord. Uh, shout out to Daniel. He's been asking me a couple of questions. And I want to give you guys some insight as to how I think when I research crypto. Uh, in case you guys haven't seen, I did have a video posted on how I research crypto. It was literally a free live course for you guys to run your cryptos by. It's a huge checklist. It takes a long time. I get it. But if you want to change your life, you can't be lazy, right? You got to be putting in some time and work. Um, even in my Discord, right? We got some members there. You know, if I get a certain question asked and they know, they'll, they'll probably laugh at who's watching this because they know what I'm going to say. If you ask me a question that makes me think laziness or that you want an easy, done for you approach, I'm not going to give you the answer you want to hear. I'm going to literally tell you, like, do your own research or, or do this, do this, you know. Um, people think, you know, I'm going to just give them the easy way out. That's not how I am. Not, and uh, I'm going to give an uh, example of why certain things matter in this market and why certain things don't matter. Um, so recently we called a play uh, Suku. It's a Web3 play. It's a little bit of a riskier play because they have a centralized marketplace. They have uh, that high dilution. And uh, one of the questions that was asked on uh, Discord, let me see if I can read it real quick. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. He's like, uh, John, how can you demonstrate the value of Suku as an enterprise today relative to what it could be? This way, instead of something to be worth 10 to 100x, you could say that relative to crypto, XXX, this one's undervalued. And then by updating the, the valuations based on the use cases and competitors, your view of a given crypto would change. So it's not a bad question at all. It's just an unnecessary question, right? Because like when I drop a video on a crypto or I give you guys my insight as to why I'm bullish, that doesn't open the door for you guys to be like, okay, let's get up. 30 page essay on why you're bullish. Listen, investors, no offense, don't give a F about certain cryptos and what the tech actually is. The tech, the narrative, the niche, it plays a factor. But people are looking at other things aside from just those little things, right? That's why in that research video, I had a whole checklist of what I look for. And let me see if I still have it um, on here. See, I have it right here. Look at all that checklist. So maybe one or two things is not uh, is not uh, ideal when you research a crypto. But just like in criminal justice, they say 
totality of the circumstances. This is totality of your research, right? And I put Coinbase only because the majority of my players are Coinbase. Um, what is it? Tech consensus, narrative, niche, marketing pitch. In this case, this question came from competition and the unique marketing pitch. Um, then you have utility, market cap, tokenomics, allocation, the age, the exchange listings, website, social media, roadmap, white paper, ecosystem partnerships, the team, are they docs, are they anonymous, uh, their resume, what have they been doing? Um, team activity, are they proactive? Do they care? Do they give a shit about their crypto? <laughs> um, the marketplace, is it centralized? In this case, it is. Is it decentralized? Um, <clears throat> catalysts, exchange listings, marketing, partnerships, new products, ecosystem growing, Everdrome's case, TVL increasing, um, community, how do they, how do people feel about it? Do they have a large community? Do they have a lot of holders? In this case, for Suku, less than 13K holders, right? Um, entries. Is it cheap? Is it not? What's the market cap like? Exits and the risk level. Is it Bitcoin? No. Is it a mean coin? No. So where does the risk lie? Um, these are all things you got to look for, right? Now, you can go down that entire list and be like, Red flag, red flag, green flag, green flag. The goal is not to be so anal about your research to where you're like, if I don't get this answer, I'm going to stay away. Or if I get this answer, I'm going in. Like, you got to look at the bigger picture, right? And this is what really matters in crypto, hence the title, is that you're getting early into emerging marketplaces before the confirmation bias, before everybody FOMOs in. Like every single crypto you guys buy, every single one, if it's a small market cap, you're not going to see people say, it's great. It's bullish. Nobody, nobody likes a crypto that is a sub 50 million market cap. Nobody. Whales don't usually buy it because it's too risky for them. There's no saturation there yet. So if they put so much money down, it's... It can go down 50% a day, you know, whatever. It's too risky for them. Also, if it's not a decentralized marketplace, the team can manipulate price action, sell some tokens, drop the price, cause retail to get the home alone phase and sell. Okay. There's many factors to crypto and some matter more than others. Um, some people are so hung up on the competition. Like, like for example, right? Solana and Ethereum. No one buys Ethereum and is like, Okay, well, what specifically is it better than Solana, Cardano, Avalanche? I mean, yeah, you can definitely add that in. It's great. But um, the way I look at it is, okay, Ethereum, it's got first movers advantage. It has institutional adoption. These players back it. The fees are high, sure, but this is why I like it. And, yes, the competition plays a factor, but when you spend so much time and energy on any specific part of your research, it's like you're just stressing yourself out for nothing. It definitely plays a factor, and that's just to answer Daniel's question. Like, like when I tell you guys why I'm bullish on Suku, it's not so like you guys could be like, great, he convinced me, or great, he, 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 it's not good, I'm going to stay away. You got to use what I say, my research as like level one in a game and now you're playing the game you're going to level two level three level four and you decide from there if you want to finish the game or not um you can't be lazy in this market i say that all the time like if you want to be rich you want to retire you got to unfortunately put in time in the market you got to sacrifice you got to have delay gratification you can't be a lazy investor um, some of you come into my group and you're like, John, I have a hundred K. Can you tell me what to buy? And I'm like, I'm not doing that. Some get mad and cancel and some say, I understand I'm staying. Listen, I don't want those people in my group and I'm not here to be an a-hole because you're not going to learn anything. I don't want you guys to be robots to where you're entirely dependent on what I say. Because listen, I know I made some good calls. I'm going to make a bad call eventually, okay? Knock on wood, I've been blessed by God. I thank him. But listen, I'm going to make a bad call eventually. Like, understand that. I'm going to, okay? I'm not perfect. I never claim to be perfect, okay? I admit my wins. I admit my losses. And I move on. 
I don't care about people hating and saying certain things because I understand I'm human. But now you as an investor, if you want to go from here to here and your quick assessment of doing that is like, I want to just do this. You're not going to make it. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that you're not going to make it. You have to be doing what the majority are not doing. The ones who want to just sit back and, and be lazy and be like, hey, John, I have 100K. Just tell me what to buy. Those are the ones who are not going to make it because, again, maybe you make some money, sure, in the short term. But what's going to happen next cycle? You're going to be at step one with this money and have no idea how to multiply it more. You're going to have to do the same thing over again. Okay, let me find another YouTuber and try to get someone to say exactly what to buy and hope to God I trust him that he's going to make me money. Like That's a, a loser's mentality. I'm sorry. I hate to say it. That's not the way you go about it. Like Your mentality, like anything that you want in life that's hard to get, should be, okay, this is where I am. This is where I want to be. This is what I'm doing. This is what I have to do. This is what's not really working. This one's working, scrap this, do this, and just get better. Listen, if you make a mistake, which you're going to do, I've done it, that's normal, okay? Not every pick's going to 100x. I don't care who's lying to you and telling you that. Not every pick is going to be a Bitcoin-type move. So if you as an investor understand this, you're already in a better position mentally, right? And I was telling my Discord, like I'm a very chill and patient investor. I really am. I mean, the coffee kind of amplifies my personality a little bit, but um, like I'm very methodical. I'm very patient. I understand why things happen. You got to be intuitive, right? Um, a lot of people are scared about this Uniswap and Wells notice thing. Listen, it's not random, guys. Uniswap is the biggest DEX for Ethereum. They were trying to call Ethereum a security, right? How else can we attack Ethereum? Let's go after their main DEX. Now, what does this do? Retail can't buy on Uniswap or at the very least is going to think twice about it because they don't want to lose funds on there or risk seeing Uniswap go under, which not going to happen. But it's a, it's what do you call it? Chasing straws or something like that with, with the SEC. They know it's a losing battle. But what does it do? It bides them time. It causes suppression in price. It causes fear. What is fear? Part of FUD. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. What is this Wells notice doing with Uniswap? Causing fear. Fear of what's going to happen. What crypto is going to go to. Uncertainty. Can I buy in this DEX in the future? And doubt. Are we going to see a bull cycle? I'm not joking, guys. Like That's what I'm seeing out there in the market. And that's why it's so easy for the whales to shake you out. Because they know the majority of people probably left the market already because of this stupid uh, fun and not realize the SEC has done this so many times. They called XRP a security, didn't work out. They called ADA a security, didn't work out. They went after Coinbase, not working out. But going after Uniswap, it's not going to work out. Like sometimes they 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 do this because they know it's going to shake you guys out. Like the faster you understand this, the better off you're going to be. Now it's not your job to be. A detective, obviously you have YouTubers like me, but you want to start being aware of what's going on. What's happening in two weeks? The Bitcoin having what's getting uh, a launch soon? The ETF, right? And so, what's happening for crypto? Adoption's taking place, guys. Adoption, smart money's coming in. So, what I feel is happening is that they're trying to slow the growth because it sounds like we're having a really big bull cycle. So a lot of people are trying to confuse you guys and say the bull cycle is already like, like this is profit taking, get out, or they're or worse saying it's not going to come now because of this black swan event. Like, listen, I was there for FTX going down. I was there for Terra Luna going down. I was there for uh, Elon Musk banning Bitcoin as payments. I was there for China banning Bitcoin. I was there for everything that was bad in crypto. So when I tell you guys, like, this is nothing new to me, it really is nothing new to me. That's why I can look at any crypto, watch it be like this flat for multiple weeks and months and not even bat an eye at it because I don't care. And I was saying this to my group, like, people always wonder, how do you get a big bag of anything? How'd you get a million cash on? John? How'd you get this? How'd you get that? How'd you get 300,000 art block? It's because I didn't just buy it and expected it to rip like this. I bought it, and while the majority were concerned about it not moving for a week or two weeks or three weeks, 
I looked at that as like, great. Keep thinking that I'm going to keep buying it in this range until it's source. I will keep buying it until I don't want to buy it anymore. And then I move on. Buy, buy, buy. Okay, feel good. Move on. Sounds simple, right? It really is. But people are in a rush to buy a crypto. And if it doesn't move for three days, they freak out. Or worse, they swap it. Like yesterday, we called Suku. And people were literally selling art block for Suku. And I'm like, you guys are idiots selling a blue chip crypto that is still a sub 300 million market cap to chase a low cap. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying like, I've done that before. Listen, you're talking to someone who was a beginner like many of you now. It's a bad mentality. Eventually you make a bad trade. And the same advice I gave to my discord is how would you feel if you sold art block yesterday and Suku went flat and art block went to $10? Would you be happy? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. So you got to fix that. I understand the reason why people do it. Again, I've done it before, so I know where it's coming from. Maybe your cash flow is not good. You feel like there's no time left. You're taking profits too soon to catch something and then roll it over to the next one. Taxes are a real thing. I just paid 50000 in taxes, okay? I know what taxes are like. It fucking sucks. Sorry to curse. I'm just saying. When you feel like you're not making much money, and trust me, I get it because I was making 20 bucks an hour working at my previous job for four years. At 31 years old now, it was horrible. What I did was I worked overtime when I could, which was often, and I cut down on my living expenses. I wasn't going on vacation. I wasn't going out partying. I wasn't buying tons of clothes. I didn't go to an expensive gym. I made food at home. I didn't go on so many dates. You know, like I cut back to make up for that lack of income I was getting because 20 bucks an hour is atrocious, you know, especially given my age. And I had, you know, best friends and friends who are making six figures already. So instead of comparing myself to them, instead of feeling like, okay, I'm just going to swap every crypto and make up for my funds. No, that's an easy loser's way out. You're not going to get better that way. And you, it becomes very stressful because in the back of your head, and no one's going to admit this, but in the back of your head, when you swap a crypto, you're kind of hoping that crypto doesn't pump, right? But what often happens when you guys sell that crypto pumps? So like, why put yourself in that position? Unless you're truly consolidating that crypto to just do that because of you feeling like you don't have enough income or time. That's usually where it comes from. Lack of income or lack of time or fear of. It's all a fallacy. If you're here now, you're early, super early. Okay. A lot of our plays, Suku, GFI, hell, even Aerodrome, PNG, Shapeshift Fox, CTX. I'm just naming recent picks. Um, even Artblock and LSX, guys. All these cryptos are sub 500 million or sub a billion market cap. Utility tokens. Imagine what's going to happen when we have the old coin season. They're going to be minimum a billion, multi billions, okay? Um, so let these shakeouts cause dumps. Once you rewire your mindset to literally enjoy the red. And enjoy consolidation. Sorry, I'm trying to get my hands there. Enjoy consolidation for cryptos and not be in a rush to see a pump. You're going to be so much. Uh, you're going to be reducing your stress so much and enjoying it. How do you buy a crypto and become a top holder if it pumps so fast? Someone tell me right now. Tell me. How would you buy Caspa like I did at a penny and have a million if it went from a penny to 20 cents in two days, tell me the only ones who would have been whales or sharks in this case, the millions of shark would be whales who bought it all in one go. You want to enjoy consolidation. It does not mean the crypto sucks. That is another common misconception. This one's pumping. This one's not. This one's good. This one's trash. Again, a rookie beginner mistake. If you were following me in the bear market, you would have left my Discord for one because I lost many members and you would have been impatient as hell. A lot of you guys don't know what it takes to hold a crypto. 
Imagine holding our block for over a year, seeing nothing. LCX over a year, seeing nothing. Seeing PNG now consolidating for a couple months. Even our block, right? Our block was consolidating at a dollar sixty-five to a dollar seventy for over a month. And now look at it, consolidating on a dip at two dollars and seventy cents. You see how fast eventually it moves. You're never gonna see probably sub two dollars again. And people faded me on this call when it was ten cents, a dollar, two dollars. I'm too late. The other day, someone said. I'm too late to art block. They said that at $1.75. They would have been up already. So this is what I mean. Everything is relative. You got to get your head out of your ass. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be mean here. I'm just telling you guys what you need to hear. You have to be understanding enough and open-minded enough to realize maybe you don't know it all. Because I'll tell you this. I don't know it all. I am not perfect. There's probably way better YouTubers out there, better investors. I don't have an ego. I'm never going to say like, oh, guys, yeah, he sucks because he has this pick. Oh, this one semi pick sucks. Okay, he's a garbage YouTuber. I'm not like that. I could care less. Why do you guys gave a uh, flag to uh, Ben from BitBoy because he he leaked the pick on Suku? He bought it. So who cares? Let him talk about it. Okay, it markets our picks. I could care less. I don't care who steals picks and he didn't even steal my pick by the way he, he probably did buy it and he bought it he said he bought it so who cares um but people get too like uh it's like too much of like a monopoly type where like i'm better than you you're better than him it's like who cares man nothing's that serious right like who cares uh if you're making money and you're in a nice community whether it's mine or someone else's i don't care as long as you're making money if you're enjoying yourself that's all i care about you don't have to join my group. And I'm not saying that as an arrogant person. I'm saying that like I just want the best for you guys. I really do. Like I wouldn't be on here on YouTube if I genuinely didn't want to help you guys. I'm being 100% honest here. You're talking to somebody who's talking on their laptop with no mic, no music. Like <laughs> I literally made this channel to disseminate information, document my journey, and help you guys. And grow a community, which we've done the old-fashioned way. Um, so the best advice for you guys going forward, a generalization, have an open mind, understand the mistakes you made to this point, look at your portfolio objectively, see if you've been too emotional lately, see if you've been researching properly. If not, again, check out my research video. It'll help a lot. I gave you guys that for free because I don't want you guys to be fully dependent on me. It's okay to ask me questions. I'll never say you're dumb for that. And my Discord knows this too. But I want you guys to be a little more self-sufficient. So when you do make money this cycle, you at least have a base if you want to. Next bear market to multiply that going forward. I'm trying to teach you guys skill sets to become more confident and successful investors that will also make you independent enough to carry over into other facets of your life. I'll tell you this. Since I've been, become a better investor, um, I notice I've been more independent. I don't seek validation from anyone anymore. I used to back in high school and stuff like that. I'm going to the gym more. I just feel better because I'm becoming more of a, a, my own person. And I can speak from experience. When you guys start realigning this in your own head, you'd be surprised how much your whole life changes. Investing does play a factor in your whole life. Um, but what's real quick, read the article and then I'll get to a, a QA. Um, so uh let's get to this real quick. Sorry for ranting so long. I, I'm very passionate about this stuff, and um I know we didn't talk about so many picks here, but sometimes you guys need to hear certain things because I had to jumpstart some of you, especially if you're new here and you don't understand this stuff. Like the faster you get this stuff. And a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about, especially those who are on my Discord who are making six, seven figures. Like, you guys know what I'm talking about is, is legit. Like, uh, this is the only market where you can change your life in a year or two years. So if you know this, you should have that mamba mentality to do whatever it takes, right? I have it. Like, I came from stocks. To make a 2x in stocks takes 10 years on average. I'm not waiting 10 years to change my life. And, and I know... All of you are not here watching this right now because you want to wait 10 years. You want to do this shit now. So if you know that, if you know it's possible, 
speaking from experience, I've changed my life now in two and a half years. You can do the same. You just got to be proactive now. So let's read this. Um, ready to fight. That's good. Okay. Yeah, guys, this is all grabbing at straws. See, again, people sell because they're scared. See, it happens, right? If you see a black swan event, who cares? Unregistered securities broker. Yeah, of course. They're going to mention that. It is what it is. Again, it's a main dex, right? So you guys can read this in your own time, but it's a main dex. Like, that's why I didn't even read this article before I shared it here because I'm not concerned, guys. They're not going to take Uniswap down. And if they do, it's, it's a black swan event, but they're not going to do it. So, but obviously, you know, what do I know, right? <laughs> Just do your own research. Uh, let's get into a, um, a Q&A. I'll pull up point market cap in case you guys need to see anything. Oh wow, they got a Dragon Ball Z crypto now. That's pretty cool. But I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> uh, Sarah with a ten dollars super sticker. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. It really means a lot. And NS, my Discord member. Thank you so much. I I did a live stream before this, guys. By the way, that's why I'm a little tired. I did a one hour live stream for Discord. I do them every single week. So if you guys want to do live streams uh, in addition to this, especially if you have a question, because I can't get to every question here, um, a lot of members do enjoy it. So, you know, definitely check it out. I do them every single week. It's a QA. and a That alone is a lot of value. And then you have, obviously, my buy alerts, my sell alerts, um, the awesome community. It's a very good group. So I definitely encourage you guys to join. Um, but obviously, you know, I'll still help you here too. So I'm not going to leave you guys out the dry. Um, thank you. Lily, can I become a cash but millionaire as bull run if I'm holding a yes, you can. Um, it really depends on how many exchanges they, they get listed on. Um, Casper, worst case, I think is going to a dollar. Um, my two to five dollar prediction, I still think is possible, but it's not possible if they don't get on a kraken. At the very least, Crypto.com, Gemini, they need something because the majority of newbies are not going to come in and buy on Mexi. They're not using a VPN, contrary to what you hear on YouTube. Um, people can disregard that, say I'm stupid. I'm literally telling you facts. Like The majority of people do not use VPNs. They don't. you got to understand this. People call them normies. Why do you think the term normie started? What does normie sound like? Normal. What does that mean? common behavior what's a common behavior in crypto buying on coinbase buying on binance so now you're talking about caspa if it doesn't get on these exchanges who's not going to buy it the beginners retail where a lot of the money comes from okay even whales people don't understand about whales there's a bunch of whales in caspa yes but there's many that are waiting for it to get on a tier one because they want to make sure it's established and has the exposure to where they can get in and they can still run up. They understand that if it's not on a, a Coinbase, Binance, or at the very least Kraken, the majority of retail won't be there to pump their bags. So they won't put down that much money, most of them, not some of them, some of them do do it, but they won't chance it until they know retail has the opportunity to buy it. A lot of YouTubers, you'd be surprised, don't know this, okay? But a lot of these catalysts of the exchange listing, it's not because of the actual listing. It's the exposure of the new money who can now buy it, that pump it. It's not because Coinbase alone is the best exchange. It's because of the marketplace that Coinbase has that can now buy it. It's the accessibility to it, the exposure to it that drives the price up. Or block didn't ride up from $0.07. Cents to three dollars because of the listing okay the listing took place a while ago in the bear market it went up because of marketing taking place cattle was taking place their ecosystem growing which many people disregard and say oh porter says me nothing blah 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 all nonsense and it ran up because it had the exposure of the marketplace of coinbase and all it took was some catalyst, some proactivity on the team to send it soaring. 
Okay. A lot of people don't understand this. Again, not my job to convince you guys, like all the cryptos that we saw soaring, Aerodrome. Again, a normie coin. Why didn't run up? It got hype. It got marketing. It has the exposure of the Coinbase listing. It didn't go like this on Coinbase and do this. When I bought it, when we bought it, it was 14 cents. It only ran up because we started marketing it. And then eventually the base got so big, which is why you're seeing many YouTubers covering base memes, because it got popular, because basis TVL increased. What is that? Catalyst, activity, money moving. This is not random, guys. I can give you examples all day. All day. People think if it's old, it sucks. If the chart's bad, it sucks. That is a fallacy. That is completely moronic. Okay. Again, I had this checklist for a reason. Like, look at all these factors. Okay. If you looked at Art Block two years ago and said, the chart sucks, I'm not going to buy it, you would have missed out on the most legendary call. To this day, that was my best call. And I'm not trying to sound like an arrogant angel. I'm just saying, looks can be deceiving. You have to do your own research. Many, I had a YouTuber, I won't name drop him. He called Aerodrome a rug pull when it was 60 cents. Okay. It's at what? Almost $2 right now on a dip. You see why opinions mean nothing in this space? Absolutely nothing. Even what I say, I tell you guys, listen, I don't know at all. I make bad calls too. This is why I say use whatever I or someone else says as a base. If I say something's good and someone else says something's bad, it's not your job to say, okay, he sounds more confident. I'll go with him. No, that's a loser's game because if anyone believed that YouTuber who called it a rug, they missed out on life-changing games. Okay? Hate to say it, but they did. And it's not because I don't sound confident, whatever. I just tell you guys what I believe. And then it's up to you if you want to take that and add it to your research. That's all it is, guys. I'm not saying I'm better than anyone else. I make better calls than this guy or this guy. I'll never say that. All I'm saying is no matter what you hear, no matter what you read, no matter what you see, be a little skeptic, question it in a healthy way, and then make your move accordingly. Again, this is why I don't allocate money. I'm not a financial advisor, and it does you nothing. Okay, if I just said, hey, take your money, put it here, the minute that crypto goes down, guess what's going to happen? Hey, John, you're still bullish? Hey, John, I lose the money. You, you still like it? Like that dependency falls on me now. It doesn't help you at all as the investor. So, um, you know, I can only give you guys so much of a head start, but it's up to you if you want to finish that race yourself. So. Uh, I know I went off topic again, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's possible if it hits, you know, uh, it hits what, $2, it's possible, um, but we'll see what happens with the catalyst. Uh, man, I ran for a while. Crap. Just saw an old video on Parsec. What happened to that? Yeah, so they migrated. They migrated to React Token, and so I sold it. I don't like the majority of migrations. The only exceptions I've seen so far is Ethereum and Render because Render needed it for their utility. Solana is a scalable, faster, cheaper ledger. And Render is rendering services in the AI sector. So for what they wanted to do, that migration was bullish. Ethereum migrated to proof of stake. And although I didn't like that move inherently, I understood why they did it. They are the most backed layer one. They have institutional adoption and a lot of political figures behind them. And one of the biggest conflicts in everyday life is climate change, scalability issues, energy issues. So now Ethereum, even though it's inflationary, it is now deflationary because when they merge the proof of stake, they drop their emission schedule by like 90 something percent. So now if you go on ultrasound money, which was pulled up real quick, um, I'll show you guys what I mean. Um, the supply is only going down. So when you think of it from a supply uh, st uh, standpoint, it makes it more bullish. Uh, hold on. Let me pull it up. So that was a migration that I enjoyed too. 
So let me just show you real quick. So look, circulating supply. In the bear market two years ago, this was 125 million. So it's already down a lot. And look, so 14 in the last seven days, 14758 burns and only 17326 issued. See, even with this inflation, because we're not in a full, you know, once the old coin season takes place, we're going to see more of a burn. Um, let me see if I could change the uh, time frame. But even with the inflation, it's not that bad. See, look, it's burned a lot. Uh, where do you go? Let's we'll see 30 days. Let's see what it is. Hold on. So 30 days, look, it's down 20,702 over 30 days. Look, actually even more. That's in right here, 94,410 burned and only 70, we'll round it up, 74,000 issued. That's deflationary. Look, you see it here, right? So for Ethereum, that was the exception, the exception too. Also, more reasons why it was the exception. On their roadmap, they want to become scalable, sharding. With their current tech and consensus of proof of work, it was impossible. So again, that's why the move was necessary. So Ethereum was the exception. What are cryptos that weren't the exception? Parsec was one of them. I read the reasons why they wanted to migrate to React token. It didn't sound bullish. It sounded like a money grab. The team was like, oh, yeah, this improves, this improves. And I'm like, yeah, okay, don't care about that. Don't like that. Gala, another example. Gala, and people think I dropped the ball on Gala. Gala is what, five cents? I sold it at three cents. That would be less than a 2x for me. Like, how is that a, a, a lose on me? I definitely dropped the ball on uh, Solana for sure. And even though Jasmine, I lost because I sold it and it went up to like two cents. I still would have sold it even today because I didn't agree with the move, which is indifferent to the price. But yeah, those two I made, I guess you could say losses on, right? It is what it is. Um, let's see where it's at. So Gala. <clears throat> uh, Gala is almost six cents. Round it up, 2x. A 2x in over a year. I sold it in May of... Uh, I don't even remember when I sold it. It was May in the bear market. So whatever, what was that, two years ago <laughs> or last year? It was either last year or two years ago. A 2x in a year or two, that's pretty bad. Um, so, yeah, that's why I sold Parsec and Gala. And then Jasmine, it wasn't a confirmed migration. It just smelled like a migration, so I got out. Those are examples of migrations, 95%, that I don't agree with. But Render... And Ethereum, for the reasons I described, are the exceptions to why I'm okay with them. Even though I don't hold Render and I no longer hold Ethereum right now aside from like fees and stuff, those are examples of why I don't mind migrations. So I hope that answered your question. <clears throat> Josh, hey, John, ABT has been losing trading volume. What do you think will cause them to really hit? Yeah, it's losing trading volume because people are selling it for new picks, like I said before. Um, it is what it is. It doesn't affect it in the long term, short term, short. Um, yeah, so adoption. Their ecosystem growing. Uh, they're part of Web3. AI, the developers have to hold ABT, the actual token, to build. So when you think of the adoption of crypto, DID, the centralization, builders, use an ABT, the supply shock, the catalyst of being on a Binance potentially soon, all these factors plus marketing. Obviously, it's all hearsay. It's a gut instinct, but so far I've been right. Could be wrong. I don't think I'm wrong on this one. Art block is still my most bullish play, and that is not changing anytime soon. Um, but yeah, keep doing your research and see what else you find. Thoughts on KRC20? I don't know what that is. Is that the fork of Caspa? Um, KRC20, what is that? Hold on. Is that like Caspa's ecosystem? Hold on. Let 
Oh, it's for KuCoin? I don't know what that is. Is that KuCoin or Casper? Oh, or is it smart contracts or Casper? Um, if it's smart contracts, that's very bullish for Casper. That's definitely a catalyst, right? Um, that'd be great. I mean, we have ERC 20s, right? There are tokens for Ethereum. So I'm assuming KRC is probably Casper. That's very bullish. Very bullish. If that's the case. NFT Queen, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. You're the best. RxD. Um, I'll give you my first impression of it. I can't obviously research it fully, but um, let's give it a go. Oh, Radiant. That's an uphold too, I saw. Okay. I remember this one. Oh, no. This is different. Isn't there one called Radiant Capital? Hmm. So let's see what it is. Hmm. So a scaling solution, it sounds like it's somewhere at the chain, like, hmm. It's kind of vague, though. Proof of work, though. Hold on. Ah, uh, that could be pretty underrated, actually. Hmm. Anything scale on blockchains is usually pretty bullish, but um, it's, I wish they gave more information here. We'd probably have to go on the website and check. <laughs> Benny Boy <laughs> seems pretty bullish on it. All right, let's check the chart. Came out in 2022, the bear market. Uh, went to 007. It's got to be a very large supply if this thing never broke a penny. Um, past year, it's down 62%. That's that's not great. It should be up. Cryptos that are down in the past year, it's not everything, but it's not a green flag to me. Um, especially in the past year coming out of the bear market, you want to see upwards price action. Um. Let's see what exchanges it's on. So, CoinX is not bad. eToro is also like a, like a stock exchange. But this is not any big exchange. So, my concern with Radium is that the team doesn't market it to, to put it on an exchange. Like, it's been around for over two years now or around two years. So, my question is, why isn't it on a KuCoin yet? A Mexi at the very least. The uh, Kraken. Binance, Coinbase. So <clears throat> when I see that in relation to this, so this is what the admin behavior is like, right? Because look, no big exchange listing. And then when you click the year chart, it's down. So when I see that right off the bat, I'm thinking the team is trying to get out. Or at the very least, they're not proactive. Okay. So this is why utility plays a factor. But if you have a good utility, but a team is not proactive or doesn't care or is very shady, then this looks more sus. But let's go down here first before we see the allocation. ICO, I want to see this one. If it's a big ICO, again, red flag. Because of everything we've seen so far, lack of tier ones, price action sucking in the past year. I don't care about the old chart. I want to see what they've been doing recently. Um, No ICO, huh? So no ICO is good. But then I'm wondering why is it dumping? So uh, let's see. Ten is that ten billion? So ten billion total supply, max supply is twenty one. So they had a burn, I guess. So this is full dilution. No, full dilution is forty two million. Okay, so I mean. <laughs> It's got some question marks to it, right? 
I want to know why a Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, KuCoin hasn't listed it. Because same as before, right? Like Casper, which is why the price is probably dipping. If the team is not proactive, if normies can't buy your crypto, if whales don't trust your crypto enough to put capital in, it's not going to rocket ship. So in my eyes, for me, I wouldn't invest into this. It's not about always trying to be so early to a play. It's about trying to be in a fast vehicle, right? If no one cares about your crypto, no matter how good it sounds, and no one trusts it because there's no backing behind it to see, okay, is it good, whatever. And keep in mind, this is a first impression, right? I didn't check the team out and all that. Um, so don't be offended. But just on what I've seen so far, it wouldn't be a smart play for me. So just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, it's to me, it's too risky at this at this stage. Like a, a micro cap, like for example, GFI, it's backed by Coinbase and other VCs. It's on Coinbase. It got launched the same time as this one, 2022. So I would rather focus on something like this, even with the FUD they have, because it's backed by big players. So now look at this year chart. You see this? And you're not late, by the way. You're still, I think the full dilution is actually 300 million. This is probably wrong. They have 70% circulating, not 25%. But even so, this shows and this shows that people are marketing this. And then when you go on the website, it reflects in the VCs back in it. Again, not many YouTubers know about this or are talking about it. They just go like, oh, great. Utility's great. All chart sucks. Again, this is like the lazy way to do it. So I'm not lazy at all. And I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying like, you got to look at everything. Again, the totality. Check out that research video. Um, it really does help a lot. Um, MassBase, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. NFA, I think some people don't realize a 20 to 100 extra money. Yeah, uh, some of these plays take a long time. Like it, it, It's just the nature of the game, right? Like patience and emotional control, if you just get those two fixed, you'd be surprised how much money you're printing by the end of the cycle. People, um, they're always in a rush. You ever hear that expression, NFA? You're in a rush to go nowhere fast. <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing, right? The market's going to move with or without you regardless. So why be in a rush to see something move when in, in fact you should be reframing that to be like, okay, it hasn't moved I have more time to research, more time to accumulate, more time to get a bigger bag, and then I can watch it moonshot at some point. And then if it doesn't moonshot after whatever time and you decide it's not good, you could always swap at that point, right? Um, it's really not that hard. Um, it does take a lot of time, though, I'll be honest. Like, I know some of you guys have families, jobs. Like, it does take time, okay? I'm doing a lot of the work up front. But as long as you're taking that and you're applying it and adding it to your research, you'll always be in a great position. And then when you uh, add to that emotional control, emotional control and patience, and you understand the mentality of the market, that collaboration will expedite your success massively. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you guys all for the super chats. It really, really means a lot. John, will PNG hit 20 this cycle? So my crystal ball is back there. Um, price predictions are educated guesses. No one knows for sure. I can only give you my predictions based on catalyst, proactivity, um, uh, what else? Ecosystems, competition. So PNG, if you compare it to Uniswap, it can realistically hit $40 this cycle. However, I'm not going to say that because Uniswap is a main dex for Ethereum. And PNG, although for many chains, the main one's Avalanche. And Avalanche is obviously not Ethereum, right? A $5 price tag for PNG is a $1 billion market cap, which for a DEX is nothing. So based on where Uniswap went, based on PNG's tokenomics, which are amazing, they have $215 million circulating out of their $230 million total supply. I retweeted this on Twitter. Their top wallet is for liquidity. For governance to vote and people at stake it, which I'm not doing, they get more of. And it's still a fixed supply, which is why PNG 
<clears throat> is scaling like Art Block is. It consolidates, it scales, it consolidates. Um, but to answer your question, yes, twenty dollars is definitely possible. Um, I'll be taking my initials out probably sooner, but also keep in mind I got an eight cents, so my entry is different than yours. But um, yeah, twenty dollars is definitely possible. But look at this year chart, right? Treadmill, 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 stairs, 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 elevator, back on the treadmill, going downstairs, going upstairs, elevator, and now it's consolidating, right? Um, let me find a live coin view. Hold on, because it shows at ninety days. Live coin watch. <clears throat> if you guys enjoy these kind of live streams, by the way, just leave me a like. It helps a lot. Um, it lets me know you guys enjoy this kind of content because I, I really do like helping you guys. And I, I try to help the majority of you the best way I can. Um, so PNG, right? Let's pull up the chart. Uh, 90 days. See? Perfect example. Look at this. We're in the accumulation zone. But look, though, right? 40 cents, 40 cents, 45 cents, 39 cents, 40, 40, 40. But now look. If you don't look at this, you miss the little elevator move right here, which was 56 cents. And now look, we're on a new floor. This is uh, the basement, penthouse coming down to the third floor, second floor, third floor, third floor, third floor, fourth floor, fifth floor. And now we're not back at the penthouse yet, but we're back on the fifth floor and we're staying on the fifth floor. I'm trying to make it a little easier for you guys to understand. So look. The basement is never coming back, okay? And look, the basement right there, eight cents. If you're in my Discord, you would have caught this, right? Um, eight cents, guys. We're, unless you fall down the steps yourself <laughs> and you sell your bag, like you're not gonna, you know what I mean? The project has to run for it to hit eight cents. And PNG, I hate to say it, it's pretty much a fair launch crypto. So. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of good price action for it. It is one of my biggest bags for a reason. I hold over 300k coins of PNG. I hold a lot because I believe in it. I'm just telling you guys an example of why I believe in it a lot and why I'm holding a big bag. The tokenomics are very similar to our block. It's catering to Avalanche, which Avalanche is going to be huge in gaming. Very big in gaming. So instead of buying Avalanche, I want PNG. And they're also catering to Hedera, also in development mode, Songbird, and Flare. Flare is also bullish, by the way. But instead of buying Flare, I'm buying PNG. So um, obviously, do your research. They also are part of Ethmos, too. So I don't know. Honestly, uh, <laughs> I'm going all over the place here. But yeah, $20, that would be a $4 billion market cap. For a DEX, that is very doable. In fact, very easy. Um, but yeah, make sure you have your own exit plan accordingly. Best advice. Uh, great question, though. Maz, with a $2 uh, super chat. Thank you again. Really means a lot, guys. I really appreciate you guys when you guys give me support. It means a lot. Same with you, Henry. Thank you so much. I can't say it enough. Like You guys are the best. So, uh, Maz Space, um, I can't do both. Um Actually, you know what? You left me a couple of super chats. I'll do both very quick. But again, understand they're gonna be first impressions, okay? Because I can't I can't do uh deep dives on both. It's not fair to everybody else. Um, oh crap. Um, so boom. Let me share this. Ooh, that's a red flag right there and migrated. I told you, 90, 95% are bad. So I don't want to judge this, but I want to know why. That's definitely a big flag. If I was looking to invest into this off camera, like I said, I was going to actually research it, that would be the first thing I'm looking at is why they migrated. Were they hacked? Did they say they had to rebrand it like like uh, like Gala and say, hey, guys, a new one for this reasons? Like, that's the first thing I'm looking at no matter what. No matter what. 
before I even find out what the utility is, I want to know why they migrated. Um, so that's a big red flag right there. Um, let's check the uh, utility. Okay, dApps, scaling blockchains, again, similar. It has good utility, but um, not bad. This guy's a part of so many companies, so it makes me think he has divergent interests. Uh, whatever. So we'll, we'll, let's get into the market, see what it's on. Binance, bullish. Uh, Gate.io, not bad. So Binance is the only big exchange, which is not terrible. It's it's one of the better exchanges, so it's good. Um, we'll check the old chart, how long it's been around. Um, 2018, Okay. Um, the chart reminds me of Art Block, except it never had a big pump with Art Block. So this was the best run back in 2018, which is 66 cents. Um, so it didn't peak at the end of the bull cycle in 2021. It did it in April, which is kind of weird. They must have had a catalyst there. That's pretty much the peak. So last cycle, they went to 17 cents, which I guess now 10 cents, this means it's probably going to be better than the last cycle. And then it shows here, okay, 32 cents. So that's not bad. The year chart, whoa. So they had a sell-off apparently. Let's see the supply. The supply is pretty much fully diluted. Not bad. So, yeah, it doesn't look terrible. Um, I would say neutral at best. Now, what you have to do going forward is research the team, find out why it didn't do so good last cycle. In Artbox's case, they explain it on Twitter. But for this crypto, you have to understand what happened. Um, did the team sell it? Did they not market it? When did they get listed on Binance? If Binance listed it five years ago and that was their last big exchange, I want to know why. Coinbase hasn't listed it yet, which could be competition sometimes. I want to know why Mexi hasn't listed it yet or KuCoin because these exchanges have inside knowledge. They know which teams are good, which teams are not. So um, follow my checklist, the research list. Um, so we'll move on to DNT next. But, yeah, this one I would say I'm neutral on because I don't have enough information. Again, the migration to me is the most important thing. If that migration sounds like bullshit, I wouldn't touch it. So now let's go to your other one. Who, someone put these nuts on here? Oh, my God. Ridiculous. Okay, so DNT, there's multiple DNTs here. So that, to me, is not good, but I don't want to judge you. Let's see what we can get here. So supply off the bat is good. One uh, billion. Fully diluted, not bad. Market cap, 72 million. So emerging market. Um, it's been around since 2017, so it's old. Okay. Not a deal breaker at all, obviously. Uh, last cycle, it peaked at March instead of November. Uh, so it didn't peak when everything else peaked. It peaked in March. So they must have had an exchange listing or a big catalyst take place around there. And then let's see for the last year. The last year had a pretty damn good run after a nice consolidation. Um, it's on Coinbase. Okay, good. It's on Gate.io. Good. I don't know any of these other ones. So Coinbase is the big one. Now... I want to find out when Coinbase listed it because if they listed it, say, in the bear market that just passed, which, which it probably did, that makes sense why the chart is up the way it is because, again, like I always say, it's exposure. Coinbase, people can now buy it. So now think about it, right? Can't buy it, can't buy it, can't buy it. Oh, crap, I got on Coinbase. Let's buy it now, guys. So now when you click this, it might form a new all-time high now because, again, it has a saturation soon. 
in the exposure. Um, let's put the about. So it sounds like, okay. Not bad. So now your, your job with this one scene was the last one. Research the team. The tokenomics are phenomenal. It's on Coinbase, which is good. See, this is what I don't like. Joe Erger is a former professional poker player. Why the F would they advertise this? That sounds like a risky person to me. Derivatives trader? I don't know. To me, that's a very that's very risky. This one's not bad. Programmer, developer, you want to have someone like that on your team. Um So, just research it further. Um, I don't like this professional poker player. I would never put that in my resume. If I'm a crypto business company, the last thing I'm doing in my resume is saying expert trader in penny stocks and stocks or professional poker player because that means high stakes gamble, right? Poker is not gambling, but people play it for to make a lot of money. It's a high stakes game. So, like... I wouldn't want someone like that to advertise that behind a company. That makes me think they're going to be like very volatile with their projects. So again, you don't hear this a lot being talked about, right? So now it's your job to research this. And I hope this is helping you guys who don't care about these crypto to get some insight as to what I look for that makes me bullish or bearish. So these are first impressions, obviously, but you can see how I make determinations early on. But obviously, like I say, follow that research video, and it, it will really help you guys. Um, man, I can't even get to the regular chat today. It's crazy. Uh, <clears throat> that is crazy. Uh, John, how do you access next bull run price of a coin? Yes, so competition, tokenomics, catalysts, exchange listings, partnerships, ecosystem growth, stuff like that. Inflation, marketplace, um, those all determine uh, price action. Good question. <laughs> nice, man. I'm glad I helped. I'm glad I helped. Thank you. Hey, bro, thoughts on MBC? Uh, what is that? All I know is motor vehicle crash. Um, oh, crap. My my, my, my uh, laptop's dying. Uh, hold on, guys. Let me plug this in. Let's make this before it goes. Okay. That was close. I got the notification that it was on 3%. Ooh, very close. All right. So, uh, NBC, let's pull this up. It's on 2% now. Jeez. I hope it lasts. If it dies, guys, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, but I'm going to try to keep this going for a little bit. Um, Let's see. About and eh, I'm not too bullish on the utility. A mileage exchange integration that to me is like, eh, not on any good exchanges. Bitham, Coin One, La Token. So there's no exposure to people to buy your, your crypto. Um, the dilution is good. They only have 8% inflation, 3 billion supply, bullish. Um, hold on one sec, guys. Let me get my phone real quick. Okay. Uh, so... Let's see. Let's check the chart out. Uh, 
2021, it had a very good bull cycle, Jesus. But again, it peaked in April. That's very weird. It peaked in April and then it only got the two cents from there. That's not good. So yeah, uh, based on the utility, <clears throat> the utility, the lack of exchange listings, it's been around for three years and it's not even on KuCoin or anything. So now this is where the tokenomics to me looked bullish initially, but then when I factor in the chart, it looks like they, the team dumped it and left. And how I think about this being the case is because this over three years shows they don't care about the project and not marketing it. And then the utility is kind of questionable at best to me. And then this looks like they sold it because it peaks like literally it got launched here and then it peaked within a month. And then once April hit, it just tanked and never recovered. So this is where I would check the ultra and be like, okay, this is not good to me. So yeah, I, I would not invest into this, this one. Um, Definitely not. The team probably left. Um, what's your opinion on Bybit? That's the exchange, right? Um, It's okay. I mean, exchange cryptos are risky though. Uh, besides like, you got to be very careful, right? Like I hold only LCX as an exchange crypto and that's still risky because if the exchange goes under the... Uh, Crypto goes on there too, but LCX to me, they're they're too highly connected, um, which is why I chose them over like Crow and like other exchanges, like even KuCoin, right? The token's down because the exchange is in hot water. So it's always a risk, but LCX to me is the safest one. But let's pull up by a bit real quick. It's not on crypto coin market cap. Um, yeah, so buy bit. Yeah, just research it. Um, this video is getting way too long, so I, I, I can't unfortunately um, find it here, and I don't want to be. Uh, but if it's an exchange that you believe in, just make sure you check out all the metrics, right? I went through a few crypto here, so you guys should have uh, um, some criteria to go off of. But uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, John, where do you find info about our project's team, uh, website, their LinkedIn page, uh, social media, search them up on Google? Yeah, so you, you got to just spend some time and search. You got to really search. Um, if they're public figures, you can find them. You just got to really search hard for them. Uh, Michael, when do you think peak bulk, uh, Bitcoin, peak alt runs, time frame? So Bitcoin, I think the peak for everything is going to be um, – next year but bitcoin could peak this year too i just don't think it's going to happen but anything can happen um all coin season i think 2025 still but again be ready just in case for this year but i still think 2025 where do you see suko going so if they fully dilute the supply meaning they put everything in circulation i would say two to five dollars maybe if they don't and they keep it under or around 200 million circulating, I think they have like 230 million circulating, then it can hit five or ten dollars or more pretty easily. So it depends on that dilution. It's very hard, it's a very hard call. Um, but easily gonna be above two dollars for sure, I think. Um, I would say even two dollars is fun to be honest. What are your thoughts on chain swap pump? Uh chain swap, I don't know so much. Uh it's really hard to answer all your crypto questions, guys, because uh, I, I feel kind of bad. I couldn't answer the chat today. Um, just try to refrain from asking so much about certain cryptos. It takes too much time. Um, let me pull this up. So chain swap. Cross chain. Okay, not bad. Supply, bullish, bullish, okay, own circulation, market cap, 105 million, which is, you know, micro to a small cap. It's a new crypto. Chart looks good. Looks pretty good. Uniswap, Mexi, Bitmark. So it's new, 
So Mexi and Uniswap is just fine. Same with Bitmart. So when you're a new crypto, if you're less than six months old, which this one is, I'm not that concerned about the exchange listings. It takes time. But um, on a first impression, again, you got to check out the team and everything else, right? That whole checklist I showed you guys. On a first impression, this one looks good. It looks pretty good. Um, so, yeah, good one. Um, bro, it wasn't the right coin. Just type space. Um, which one? Oh, MVC space. Okay. Let me see. Oh, microvision chain. Okay. Let's see. Why does this keep doing that? Uh, hold on. What the hell? All right. Oh, they're part of DID. Nice. So it's a layer one. Hmm. Let's see. 21 million supply. That's not bad. Same as Bitcoin. Um, 54 million market cap. Okay, so far it looks good. Let's see what we can find though. So it's been around since 2023. So a new crypto chart looks good for y'all. Year chart looks good as well. So it's been around since last year. So now without clicking it yet, when I go to markets, I want to see at least one good exchange on it, which it probably will have because the chart, see, look, this is how I can kind of know it and exchange listed it because the chart is reflecting exposure that people are buying it. So watch, let's see, let's see if I'm right. I could be wrong. Let's see. Gate.io, Mexi, and BitGet. So BitGet is probably the biggest one. BitGet and Gate.io together. So these two together probably combine for like a KuCoin plus Mexi. So it's on many medium-sized exchanges. Also, BitMart is, is, you know, a little bit up there. So this reflects in the charts. Now, they still have to get on a KuCoin at the very least, which KuCoin might take time now because of the hot water. Um, chart looks good, but again, you want to see at least a big exchange listed. Um, but so far for being around for only a year, this is pretty good. Um, again, though, got to check out the team, the inflation. I mean, this is going to be a volatile crypto because 21 million is very volatile for the supply. Um, obviously you also want to check out the top 100 who's holding the majority of the supply, stuff like that allocations. But, um, First impression looks decent, but I again I'm only going off what I saw in the first two minutes. So um don't take that for uh take that with a grain of salt. All right. Uh let me just check the chat real fast. Um yeah, this is like the first time where I haven't checked out the uh chat I'm glad you enjoyed the research video I'm glad I'm gonna end this in a minute because I can't I, I don't want to make this too long uh, yeah that's the whole point honestly that's the whole point I appreciate you guys all right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up here. I'm very tired. I just did an hour live stream with Discord, and now this one's an hour and 15. So it's time to eat breakfast. <laughs> I've been fasting this whole time. So uh, I'm going to end this here. If I couldn't get to your chat, I am sorry, but I am going to try to do more live streams. So if I miss your question here, just be ready for the next one, which I'm doing tomorrow. So I will get to your questions eventually. And if you want to get into a private live stream where it's a lot less cluttered than here, Join my Discord because every week I'm doing live streams there. You also have access to me in the Discord itself. 
So it's a very good community. I really encourage you guys to join. I'm literally not just saying that. We have, what, 1,400 members, give or take? It's a lot less than here. So if you want to ask your question and get it answered, you know, guaranteed, which today on my live stream, I pretty much answered everyone's question there. Um, I definitely encourage you guys to join. But with that being said, yes, I'm fasting. <laughs> Time to eat. I am getting hungry now. So I will see you guys in the next one. Keep crushing it.